Good evening and welcome. It is time once again for CU Immigration here on WRFU LP Urbana, 104.5 FM. I will be your host for this evening. My name is Mr. Garza, and I'm here to let you know that WRFU is an open forum for the Urbana Champaign community. Views expressed are those of the speakers and are not intended to represent WRFU or UCIMC, or, as we like to say on this show, uh, UPTV, because we are on all three of these, well, two of these platforms, <laughs> hosted by one, and uh, anyway, it's a long story. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I'm back. Um, and I'm here with stuff for you. I thought since our uh, survey went so well, I'm go I've got a couple of other surveys here that I thought would be interesting to you as well um, because uh, I'm finding those are to be very rich in information and people um, have commented that they really appreciated hearing about uh, these things. So um, this one that I'm going to start with is from KFF. Who is KFF? Um, Kaiser Family Foundation. Is that right? Yes. The Kaiser Family Foundation. And this is, the topic is Asian Immigrant Experiences with Racism, Immigration-Related Fears, and the COVID-19 Pandemic. Uh, so begin with a bit about their methodology. Uh, this analysis is based on a KFF survey of Asian patients at four community health centers. Asian Health Services in Alameda County, California, Northeast Medical Services in San Francisco, California, Hope Clinic in Houston, Texas, and International Community Health Services in King County, Washington. In 2019, these four health service centers uh, served a total of 154,604 patients, 117,617 of whom identified as non-Hispanic Asian, or 79% of patients with known race ethnicity. Health centers do not collect information on patient, patient, the T there, immigration status, but nearly seven in 10 patients at these health centers are best served in a language other than English. The survey instrument was designed by researchers at KFF in collaboration with staff at the Association of Asian Pacific Community Health Organizations and the community health centers who participated in the survey. Community health center staff translated the survey into Chinese, traditional, Vietnamese, Korean, and Burmese, reflecting their patient demographic. Asian Health Services, Northeast Medical Services, and ICHS fielded the survey in English, Chinese, Vietnamese, and Korean, while Hope Clinic fielded the survey in English, Chinese, Vietnamese, and Burmese. The survey was conducted between February 15th and April 12th, 2021, by health center staff. Over a third, 34%, of respondents completed the survey in person with clinic staff. 32% completed a paper version of the survey, 25% completed the survey online, and 7% completed the survey via phone. There were a total of 1,467 survey respondents. The analysis presented was limited to 1,086 respondents who self-identified as Asian and indicated that they were a patient of one of the fourth health centers in their survey responses. Of those included in the analysis, 874 indicated they were born outside the United States, or Puerto Rico, and 176 were born in the U.S., or Puerto Rico. 36 respondents did not answer the survey question on nativity. Okay, so that is, was the methodology. That's how they came across this. Um, so here's a summary. <clears throat> Asian immigrants have faced multiple challenges in the past year. There has been a rise in anti-Asian hate crimes driven in part by inflammatory rhetoric related to the coronavirus pandemic, which has spurred the federal government to make a recent statement condemning and denouncing acts of racism, xenophobia, and intolerance against Asian American communities, 
and to enact the COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act. At the same time, immigrants living in the U.S. have experienced a range of increased health and financial risks associated with COVID-19. These risks and barriers may have been compounded by immigration policy changes made by the Trump administration that increased fears among immigrant families and made some more reluctant to access programs and services, including health coverage and health care. Although the Biden administration has since reversed many of these policies, they may continue to have lingering effects among families. Limited data are available to understand how immigrants have been affected by the pandemic, and there are particularly little data available to understand the experiences of Asian immigrants, even though they are one of the fastest growing immigrant groups in the U.S. and are projected to become the nation's largest immigrant group over the next 35 years. To help fill these gaps in information, this analysis provides insight into recent experiences with racism and discrimination, immigration-related fears, and impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic among Asian immigrant patients at four community health centers. The findings are based on a Kaiser Family Foundation survey with a convenient sample of 1,086 Asian American patients at four community health centers. Respondents were largely low income, and 80% were born outside the United States. <clears throat> the survey was conducted between February 15th and April 12th, 2021. I wonder why I have trouble saying the word February. 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 Hmm. Anyway, key findings include one in three, or 33%, Respondents report that they have personally felt more discrimination based on their racial ethnic background since the COVID-19 pandemic began in the U.S. Asian Health Center respondents report facing a range of negative experiences due to their racial or ethnic background over the past 12 months, including 14% who say they experienced a personal verbal or physical attack due to their race or ethnicity. Many respondents have immigration-related fears, and most say they don't have enough information about how recent immigration policy changes affect their family. Over 4 in 10, or 44%, Asian Health Center respondents say they worry a lot, or some, that they or a family member could be de detained or deported. One quarter, 25%, say they or a member of their household did not apply for, for or stopped participating in a government program to help pay for health care, food, or housing in the past year due to immigration-related fear. That's one quarter. Over half, 54%, say they do not have enough information about how recent changes to U.S. immigration policy might impact them or their family. I'm already hoarse. Uh, and uh, just as a brief aside, uh, we have spoken in the past about how some of these uh, changes to government programs that Trump uh, broadcast all over the place were going to affect people even when they didn't necessarily actually affect them <laughs> in, in the sense that they were going to affect the way people behaved even if they didn't actually have a, a literal connection to that person and what they were doing. So this is striking. One quarter of these people, and this is just the Asian immigrants that we're talking about here, say that they or a member of their household did not apply for or stopped participating in a government program to help pay for health care, food, or housing due to immigration-related fears. So that just shows you how... Uh, sneaky, <laughs> I guess you might say, some of those changes were. Uh, how uh, they, you know, the literal text of the change did not have as much impact as the suggestion of the change or as what people thought the change might cause or mean to them. So merely announcing and trumpeting that, yes, we're making this change. This is an important change that's coming your way. They caused more people to react than the actual change would have affected 
had everybody just done the exact same thing that they had always been doing. So that was a pretty clever, if I can use that word, uh, ploy that they employed, ploy that they employed uh, to create greater effects without actually necessarily doing anything all that dr drastic or dramatic. Anyway, back to our story. Asian Health Center respondents report negative health and financial impacts from the COVID-19 pandemic. Nearly half, 48% of respondents, say the COVID-19 pandemic negatively affected their ability to pay for basic needs like housing, utilities, and food. And over half say someone in their household experienced job or income loss due to the pandemic. Over 4 in 10 report negative effects on their mental health. Well, that was a serious thing. Nearly 6 in 10 respondents say they have worried at some point that they have been exposed to coronavirus. Most, 60%, of those who worried about being exposed say they have been tested for the virus. Among those who worried about exposure but say they have not been tested, the most frequently cited reasons for not getting tested were thinking they could isolate at home or not knowing where to get tested. Hmm. 26% didn't know where to get tested. Some also say concerns about costs, effects on ability to work, and fears of negative impacts on their or a family member's immigration status are reasons for not getting tested. That was 10% that feared uh, for immigration-related results from getting tested. That's pretty serious. The large majority of Asian Health Center patients who responded say they are willing to get a COVID-19 vaccine, with nearly two in three wanting to get it as soon as possible at the time the survey was fielded. The findings in this report are based on responses from a convenient sample of Asian patients at four community health centers. KFF worked with the Association of Asian Pacific Community Health Organizations, or the AAPCHO, and community health center staff to develop and field the survey. Because the survey is based on a convenient sample, the findings are not generalizable to a broader population and cannot be benchmarked against other population-based surveys. Respondents are limited to four locations and may be lower income than Asian immigrants overall, as they are patients of federally qualified health centers serving a predominantly low-income population. Further, as patients of a community health center, respondents are connected to a source of health care. Despite these limitations, the findings increase the knowledge base for understanding Asian immigrant experiences, which remains very limited. Uh, the health centers that fielded the survey serve a predominantly Asian low-income population that likely includes many immigrants. Four health care centers fielded the survey, Asian Health Services in Alameda County, California. Northeast Medical Services in San Francisco. We already went through all this, but I'll do it again. A Hope Clinic in Houston, Texas, and International Community Health Services in King County, Washington. Overall, 79% of patients at these health centers identify as Asian. Over 87% have income below 200% of the federal poverty level, including 54% who have income below poverty, and 12% are uninsured. Health centers do not collect information on patient immigration status, but nearly 7 in 10 patients at these health centers are best served in a language other than English. Mirroring, 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 the patient populations served by the health centers, respondents include Asian American patients who are largely low income and born outside the United States. Overall, a total of 1,086 survey respondents self-identify as Asian patients of one of the health centers. Among Asian patient respondents, over 6 in 10 identify as Chinese, and roughly 1 in 5 identify as Vietnamese, with the remaining respondents representing a broad range of ethnic backgrounds. 8 in 10 report that they were born outside the U.S. The remaining share report... Ah, excuse me. <laughs> said that the wrong way. The remaining chair report that they were U.S. born. However, these respondents may have an immigrant family member living in their household as many express immigration-related concerns in their survey responses. Over 7 in 10 respondents report total annual family income below $40,000. 
and 15% report they were uninsured. Respondents include a larger share of patients age 65 or older compared to the total patient population served by the health centers. Nearly 4 in 10 respondents are age 65 or older, compared to 20% among the total patient population of the health centers. The higher share of respondents age 65 or older reflects that the health centers fielded the survey during the time they began COVID-19 vaccination efforts, which were initially focused on people in this age group. Over half of respondents are patients at either of the two California-based health centers, while about a third are patients with ICHS in Washington State and 11% are patients at Hope Clinic in Texas. California Health Center respondents are more likely than other health center respondents to be under age 65 and less likely to have lower household income. They are also more likely to be Chinese and less likely to be Vietnamese. Given that the respondents are older than the overall patient population for these health centers, we examine findings by age to identify key differences in, experience, in experiences of adults ages 18 to 64 and those ages 65 and older. In addition to comparing, comparing findings by age group, we also examine differences between California Health Center respondents versus other health center respondents. The data allowed for comparisons between California Health Center respondents and other health center respondents, but the ability to make comparisons for Washington and Texas, specifically, was limited due to sample size restrictions. In addition, we highlight differences by gender and parental status, i.e. whether respondents are parents or guardians of children under age 18 living in their household. We also identify differences between Chinese and Vietnamese respondents. Comparisons for other ethnicities were not possible due to sample size restriction. All differences mentioned in the brief are significant at the 0 0.05 level. Okay. Now we get to the heart of this. Experiences with racism and discrimination. One in three Asian health center respondents say they have personally felt more discrimination based on their racial ethnic background since the COVID-19 pandemic began in the U.S. Roughly three in ten indicate that they have not felt any in discrimination or that they have felt about the same level of discrimination, while less than one in ten report less discrimination. So, uh, this is kind of hard. It's not really... Hmm. I can't really read these graphs very well. That would be very difficult to explain. So, I'm just going to have to read around them, and hopefully you'll get all the same information. Okay, the share reporting more discrimination since the pandemic began is somewhat higher among parents, 37%, than those without children in the home, 30%, and among adults under age 65, 35%, compared to adults over age 65, 28%. Chinese respondents are more likely than Vietnamese respondents to say that they have felt about the same level of discrimination since the start of the pandemic, 30% versus 19%, but less likely to say that they have felt no discrimination, 28 versus 36 Those who are 65 or older are more likely than those under age 65 to say that the amount of discrimination they feel has not changed, while those under age 65 are more likely to say that they have not felt any discrimination since the pandemic began. Hmm. California Health Center respondents are more likely to report both more and less discrimination since the start of the pandemic compared to those in other locations, Texas and Washington, while those in other locations are more likely to say that they have felt the same level of discrimination. Asian health center respondents say they have faced a range of negative experiences due to their racial or ethnic background over the past 12 months, including verbal and physical attacks. Over one in three, 35%, report receiving poorer service than other people due to their racial or ethnic background, at a store or other public place. One in five say that they have been denied a job for which they were qualified, and 
report being denied housing they could afford. Others report more personal attacks based on their race ethnicity, including 16% who say they were criticized for speaking a language other than English in public, 15% who say that they have been accused of spreading or causing COVID-19 or were told that they should go back to their home country, and 14% who say that they were verbally or physically attacked. Those who are under, who, uh, excuse me, those who are age 65 or older are more likely to say that they have received poorer service or been denied housing or a job based on their race ethnicity compared to younger respondents. And men are more likely than women to report receiving poorer service and being denied housing. Similarly, respondents without children in the home were more likely than parents to report housing discrimination. California Health Center respondents were less likely to say they experienced discrimination in housing or jobs compared to those of other health centers' locations in Washington or Texas. Over 4 in 10 Asian Health Center respondents say they have been criticized for wearing a mask since the pandemic began in the U.S., hmm. while 13% say they have been criticized for not wearing a mask. There are some variations in experiences among respondents. For example, higher shares of those age 65 or older say they have been criticized for wearing a mask compared to those who are younger, and men are more likely to say they have been criticized for mask wearing than women. Respondents without children in the home are also more likely than parents to report being criticized for wearing a mask. There are also variations in experiences by location with California Health Center respondents less likely than those in other locations to report being criticized for wearing a mask, and more likely to say that they have been criticized for not wearing one. Over 4 in 10 Asian Health Center respondents say they worry a lot, or some, that they or a family member could be detained or deported. Worries are higher among those age 65 or older, men and those without children in the home, compared to those who are under age 65, women and parents. Among parents, 3 in 10 say their children have worries or fears that they or a family member might be detained or deported, although there is no significant difference in their own levels of worry about detention or deportion, deportation, not deportion, <laughs> I'll start that again. Although there is no significant difference in their own levels of worry about detention or deportation by location, parents who are California Health Center respondents are more likely to say their children are concerned about a family member being detained or deported than parents in other locations. One quarter of respondents say they or a member of their household decided not to apply or stopped participating in a government program to help pay for health care, food, or housing in the past year due to immigration-related fear. Overall, nearly one in five say they did not apply for, or stopped participating in, a program that helps with housing, 12% for a program that helps with food, and 10% for a program that helps pay for health care. The shares who say they did not apply for or stopped participating in a program are higher among parents and respondents at California Health Center. However, parents also are more likely than those without children in the home to say they have received any type of government assistance to pay for things like housing, food, or health insurance in the past year, as are California Health Center respondents compared to those in other locations. Over half of respondents say they do not have enough information about how recent changes to U.S. immigration policy might impact them or their family. Chinese respondents are more likely than Vietnamese respondents to say they do not have enough information, 59% versus 41%. Asian Health Center respondents report relying on a variety of sources for information on immigration policy. The most frequently cited sources that they relied on very, or somewhat often, were television and radio in their native language, followed closely by friends and families, and social media. 
over half report relying on newspapers in their native language, and nearly half said they rely on English television and radio, or English newspapers, very or somewhat often. About 4 in 10 report turning to nonprofit organizations or the government for this information, while over 1 in 3 said they rely on religious organizations or an attorney. In general, respondents age 65 or older are more likely to report using all sources of information very or somewhat often compared to their younger counterparts, except for social media or close family or friends. In addition, those without children in the home and men are more likely to report frequent use of certain information sources than parents and women, particularly English language television, radio, and newspapers. California Health Center respondents are less likely than those of other health centers to report frequent use of certain sources of information, including English language television and radio, English language newspapers, native language television or radio, a nonprofit organization, a religious organization or church, government sources, or immigration attorneys. Over half of Asian Health Center respondents say they or another adult in their household lost their job or had their income or hours reduced due to the pandemic. This share rises to 75% for those who are parents and nearly 7 in 10 among those under age 65 and who are California Health Center respondents. Respondents also report negative impacts on their ability to pay for basic needs their mental health, and their children's education and care. Nearly half say that the COVID-19 pandemic negatively affected their ability to pay for basic needs like housing, utilities, and food. Four in ten report that it negatively affected their ability to do their job, and 43% say it has negatively impacted their mental health. The share reporting negative impacts on ability to pay for basic needs rises to over half among parents and men. Vietnamese respondents are more likely than Chinese respondents to report negative impacts on their ability to pay for basic needs and their ability to do their job, while Chinese respondents are more likely to report positive effects in these areas as well as on their mental health. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay, over half of parents say the pandemic has negatively affected their children's education, and 41% say it has had negative impacts on their ability to care for their children. In contrast, 3 in 10 say the pandemic has positively impacted their children's education and their ability to care for their children. California Health Center respondents are more likely than those of other health centers to report positive impacts on their children's education and care, while other health center respondents are more likely than California health, care, health center respondents to report no impact on education or care. Sorry, sometimes this he's reading these things. California health center respondents versus non-California health care respondents. It's just the same words over and over again. It's, it's, uh, for some reason, that's difficult. Many respondents say worry and stress related to the pandemic have affected their behavior and health in certain ways. 